So, good morning. So this video is going to be a little different to the previous videos, mainly because I can actually see now what I'm recording using my GoPro camera. Um, I am going to try and turn the following list of parts, except for the laptop, obviously, into a small ESX cluster. Um, now, I've been reading the documentation on how to do this on um, the ESX website. I will put links in the, the description below. But essentially, it looks like um, VMware have released a copy of ESX Eyes, um, the hypervisor, to run on ARM. And is that still recording? Okay, if it is, I will cut this out. But anyway, um, so they've released a copy of ESX I to run on ARM processors. And long story boring, the Raspberry Pi has an ARM processor. As you see in this one here, it's not got its heatsink on. I bought one of these heatsinks to test it out, and it seems to do the job. So the next time I'm ordering more Raspberry Pis, I will get a few of these. So the plan is. I'm going to turn all of this into a small cluster of Raspberry Pis. Now, what exactly do I have here? So we've got two Raspberry Pi 4Bs. These are the 4 gig models. Um, USB-C for power, twin mini HDMI or micro HDMI, couple of USB 3 ports, USB, uh, USB 2, gigabit Ethernet, and then, as I said, that one has a fan, the other one doesn't. Um, we've got two of these, uh, 16 gig memory cards, so these were cheap memory cards, so which essentially is handy because by the looks of things when installing Raspberry Pi or when installing ESX on a Raspberry Pi, this is the main thing you install it onto. So it can only install on iSCSI, an iSCSI LUN or on USB key. Um, so in my case I'm going to use USB keys so these are what are they uh, Kingston uh, 64 gig data traveler 103 G's um, I will stick a link in the description for them I have a small um, adapter what's beeping sorry thumbs down monkey or the watch uh, small USB uh, micro SD to full SD card reader. Uh, over here we've got our HDMI cable with the adapter to turn it into a micro HDMI for the USB or for the Raspberry Pi. We have the adapter to use this with the next dock, which is hiding down there. And once we are in production, once we have everything else running, I'm going to use these. These are PoE adapters. Basically, they take you PoE in. These are the Type C editions. They take PoE in, and they give out up to 2.4 amps of 5 volts to run something else. On the other end, we've got the USB-C adapter, and we have Ethernet in. Now, I'm actually using a, I'm using one of these already on a Raspberry Pi 3 that is running Pi Hole. Um, it's up there somewhere. Actually, this is it here. So that's my Raspberry Pi 3 running Pi Hole. I also have a Ripe NCC probe behind here as well and both of them are running using the USB-C adapter or the well they're actually USB uh, micro USB adapters and they are both plugged into a PoE switch the edge switch the bottom one is a PoE switch and both of them are powered by that that has the advantage of if I need to reboot either of those two, I can just jump or I can just flip the switch on the port and that will boot up. Now, as part of this process, 
I do need to replace some of my older um, Raspberry Pis with newer ones. So I have three old ones up here. I have an original one that doesn't even, oh it does have HDMI. Um, I don't even know what model numbers these are, but I will have to replace some of these with um, with some new uh, devices. So um, depending on how well this works, my plan is to replace this Raspberry Pi here. So instead of having a single Pi running Pi Hole, my plan is that I will run a VM running Pi Hole. And possibly some other VMs on a single Raspberry Pi. Obviously 4 gig is limiting. So probably two, maybe three 1 gig VMs will be running on it. And then at some stage upgrading to a, um, a couple of 8 gig Pi's. Um, so the two of these will run for a while until I can get an order in for more ones. So, um, yeah, now to try and get the rest of this part up and running, I will see how that goes. Um, keep tuned. So here is the video walkthrough of actually the Raspberry Pi installing. Um, we use the iOD Mini to actually do the install and it was installed onto the USB drive that's in there. Um, all seemed to work well. Um, from start to finish, it took about 20 to 25 minutes per Raspberry Pi. That included messing with UFI, making sure files were copied, everything else. But um, yeah, happy days. So um, I used the next dock, very handy. Good morning. So, um, I have just gotten ESX running. Hold on, let me try and turn off the machine. Yeah, okay. So, I've just gotten ESX running on two of my ARM servers. So, there's um, ARM number one. Uh, where's my mouse gone? Here, mousey, mousey, mousey. There we go. And there's ARM server number two. So one of them I set up correctly and the data store was created correctly. The second one I made a mistake on and never ran the correct command for boot and everything went onto a single drive. So I ended up creating an NFS share on my workstation. Um, this is pure SSD storage on this machine and I've shared it over NFS and I have mounted it on both machines. I have then also uploaded a copy of Ubuntu's 20.04 specifically for ARM edition of um, so it's the ARM server edition of Ubuntu 20.04 that's up on the ISO store so I'm just going to this is the first time I'm trying this, so we will see what actually happens. So create new machine uh, Hit next I'm gonna call this arm test one So it's an ESX 7 machine. I'm gonna set this to Linux And I'm gonna set this to Ubuntu 64 weird Windows Windows Server 10 and Server Windows 10. Hmm. Okay. OS X doesn't show up. Other FreeBSD. So that's interesting that Windows is actually showing Windows 10 because we do know that there's a 64 bit version of Windows 10 that runs on ARM processors. But Windows 2000 Server 19. That could be very interesting if that is available. Anyway, so we'll pick Linux anyway, and uh, we'll pick, um, where is it, Ubuntu Linux, so Photon, VMware Photon, which is VMware's own option is there, and you've got a couple of other options as well, so we pick Linux, Ubuntu Linux anyway, I'm going to stick this on the god box, 
and I'm gonna give it one processor. I'm gonna give it a gig of RAM with 16 gigs of storage. Power of virtualization. We leave all of these as standard. We're gonna select an ISO. Select that video card default. Uh, VMware options. I don't want to start messing around too much with this because I don't know what any of this does and I should probably read up on it before I break anything. So I'm going to hit next. Obviously one of my servers is after stopping making noise so this might sound better. Uh, so there's our ARM processor. It is not running. If we hit power on. Okay, so. Huh. Try Ubuntu, so we're just going to install. Uh, where's select? So, if we actually go and try it without doing anything, and this is just a test to make sure it actually boots. My plan is that I currently have a physical um, Raspberry Pi box running. Okay, so that took a few seconds to boot, I suppose, but well, anyway, um, I do have a physical Raspberry Pi currently running um, Pi Hole, so I'm going to spin up a second one, which I am going to uh, virtualize and add in as a secondary DNS endpoint. Um, I might do something else, I'm not completely sure. But, um, yeah, so. It does take a few minutes to boot one of the things. Okay, we have something. I think. <laughs> um, right. I'm gonna kill the window, the machine is still booting, I just wanna see. Can I see anything in the monitors? So we can see CPU usage is going up. We can see a few other things. Package is the overall. What else can we see? Hardware, no IPMI. And here, and we can see events. We, okay, what's that warning? Okay, that's just to do with the boot or the something the asset or the nfs share okay so performance so if we say yeah last hour so that's only shown us for the last hour you can see a bit of a spike on one of the cpus go back into that vm see is that booted yeah okay so yes it is um english um select done so it has a public IP well it has a private IP on my network I'm gonna use that one use entire disk so even though I did technically select um, run run it locally I am gonna just this will do a full install continue ah okay so now we're being asked stuff that i need two hands for okay anyway we get the general gist um that seems to be doing what it needs to do um back on the actual information the monitor just specifically for this cpu we can see average is 6.8 maximum 100 percent for a single cpu um so it is using quite a lot of memory um or quite a lot of processor um so when it's installed by the way it defaults the same way esx does that it's 128 120 180 day trial there is the option of adding this to vcenter we do not have any existing vmware infrastructure on prem so i have not done that um it also defaults to about one and a 1.2 1.3 gigs of ram when i spun that one up it's obviously after 
doubling because I've given it two odd gigs of RAM. Consumed CPU also went up to 25%, which you would be, which you would assume is correct anyway, given that. Um, it is 20, or I've just spun up a machine with 128 gigs of RAM, or one gig of RAM, sorry. 128 gigs of RAM on a, on a Raspberry Pi, I wish. Um, anyway, so yeah, um, that's it. So, yeah, so far so good. Um, I'm going to play around a bit. I don't know if I will have any follow-up on this part of the video. I'm going to record this and upload it. But, um, yeah, so far I seem to be happy. Um, if this does what I want it to do, um, I will definitely be a happy man. Um, and I will definitely be ordering a couple of more Raspberry Pis um, in the next couple of months. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so um, as they say, subscribe and like and all that usual jazz. And um, thanks for watching. Good luck.